Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about activities based upon interest. Um, before I start though, just to say that I've got now a lot of merchandise that you can buy from my online store at www.starbot.education. There's lots of kind of teacher journals and gifts for your colleagues. Make sure to subscribe and stick around till the end of the video where I'm going to be going into the planning process of interest-based learning in more detail. Enjoy! To start off with, I'm just going to show you where the interest-based planning fits in. So at the top of this diagram you can see that it starts with the main overview. This would be like my medium term plan. So I'd pull together all the kind of objectives, all of the data and feedback that I've got, maybe from previous settings if they're new to me, or from assessments and just daily practice and feedback from the other practitioners in the room. And I'll put them down and then we'd break that down into weekly planning. So some of the weekly planning is going to involve the adult-led group sessions, so there'll be things like the phonics, which might be differentiated into groups, the maths, and I might have a topic or you might teach by a theme. The other side of this, I will be looking at the play provision. So this is kind of how I set up the room, what games, resources and activities there are for the children when they're free-flowing. So that's when I can tell them to go off, explore the room and join in with some activities. Within this child initiated learning time, I would sometimes, if I have enough staff, have an adult that's maybe leading a particular focus or a session during that time. They might be inviting children to come over and play. And then alongside that, that's when we're starting to look at how can we enhance the provision so that on a daily basis and immediately, children, if you notice them doing something that they're really interested in, we can keep them engaged for longer. So from this, I could just make extensions on the different zones to provide more challenge as the week progresses, or I can look at this interest-based planning where I can identify small groups of children or an individual that has a particular focus on an area and then use that to input my objectives.
You can see on this diagram that we would have gathered those objectives from the children's next steps that we've noticed within their play, from assessments, maybe feedback from parents, something that maybe they're finding difficult. We're then going to pair that up with something that they're particularly interested in that's going to hold their engagement for longer when we're doing the activity. This then is put into the planning process that we're going to look at next and then from that it's delivered through their play so we can support them and extend them. From there we're then going to assess them again and the whole process starts again. So instead of writing out each area lots and lots, I just want to quickly be able to glance at my planning when teaching. I've made some emoticons, so I have the lips for communication and language, a running person for physical, anything to do with personal, social or emotional, it's kind of like a heart, we've got a reading, we've got a book, uh, for the writing we've got a pencil, in the maths number we've got a child counting their fingers, for shape we've got a diamond, anything to do with understanding the world we've got the flag and expressive arts and design we've gone for the art palette. So from there if this was my class I'd then be looking back at that medium term plan and dragging in the kind of objectives that I want from each area. So here for example with my daughter today in that video for Spider-Man we were looking at positional language following instructions and communication and language, gross and fine motor movement, I wanted her to be using one-handed tools, throwing with one hand and controlling objects. Her personal, social and emotional, I wanted her to be taking turns when playing a game and beginning to learn the rules to a game. In her reading, I wanted her to start to recognise the S for spider and in the phase one phonics, I wanted her to start to identify different sounds. In her writing, I wanted her to continue with her mark making, start to do some anti-clockwise circles and maybe identify and start to do the shape of the letter S. In her mass number, I wanted her to practice counting, stopping on specific numbers. So for example, when she's been drawing spiders before, she's been continuing after she gets to eight legs. So that was something I wanted to work with her today on. We've got regards to maths shape, I just wanted to have a go at describing shapes, maybe curved sides, pointy edges. Understanding the world, just starting to have conversations about spiders and then leading on to mini beasts. And in expressive arts and design, I wanted to start to explore the instruments and have a go at creating pictures and artwork. So once I know where I want the children to get to in different areas, I can now look back at Spider-Man as their interest and think about what activities will engage them for the longest. You can see here, so throwing a ball at Spider-Man, and then underneath that, it's just underlined with the physical, and then from there I might make notes to help anyone who's teaching it. It's minimal, it's quick, it's focused. You could always add more children, and there might be notes about children having different objectives within the same activity.